OETA presents the final three hours of Oklahoma Passage tomorrow night at 7. Oklahoma Passage was produced by OETA as an educational service for the people of Oklahoma. If you've enjoyed this major production effort, please take just a few moments to share your thoughts and comments with us by calling toll-free 1-800-288-9494. We value your opinion of Oklahoma Passage and would appreciate your calls. Toll-free 1-800-288-9494. Well, howdy. I'm B.J. Wexler. Don't, don't adjust your TV. We're coming to you in black and white in honor of the original 1931 version of Cimarron, and that's the OETA Movie Club's Friday night feature at a special time, 10 o'clock. This wonderful story stars Richard Dix and Irene Dunn and tells of the pioneers who settled Oklahoma Territory. And then, Saturday at 10, don't miss the special presentation of the 1960 color version of Cimarron. That stars Glenn Ford. This version has some of the best land run scenes you'll ever see. It's all right here on the OETA Friday and Saturday nights at a special time, 10 o'clock, to celebrate the Oklahoma land run centennial with the OETA Movie Club. And don't forget your popcorn. Next on OETA. A delightful blend of technology and nature. Watch Nova, Tuesday night at 7. Well, usually it's 9 o'clock when we start the movie club, but uh, by golly, it's 10 o'clock now. Well, if it's 10 o'clock on a Friday night, it must be the OETA movie club. Howdy, folks, and uh, good to see you out there. Gee, this is a, an exciting weekend, and of course, we have just uh, finished up uh, Oklahoma Passage and got some great prizes for trivia, which we'll tell you about in a minute. In fact, uh, we got a, a centennial uh, keychain and a centennial uh, coin there, and we got some other things to show you. You're looking great tonight, beautiful uh, night in the state of Oklahoma, and uh, great weather for the weekend, by the way. As mentioned, all this week we've been blessed with uh, wonderful history lessons about the great land run of 89. Uh, of course, newspapers have run special editions all this week, and of course, each of us have really enjoyed OETA's Oklahoma Passage, which, uh, by the way, continues tomorrow night. Now, uh, we announced something brand new a couple of weeks ago in the movie club, and that is that we are asking viewers who had pictures of themselves with famous Oklahoma. And of course, today the wagon train crossed the Cimarron, and a lot of folks were there near Guthrie today, so uh, that was an exciting day. Beginning with the big land run on April 22nd, 1889, and continuing through Oklahoma's emergence as an important rich state, well, it all happened. We've got a Hollywood trivia question for you. Even when Hollywood Western movies were at the peak of their popularity, only one Western movie ever earned an Academy Award for Best Picture. Can you name it? Well, if you've lived in Oklahoma long enough, you know that Cimarron, the movie starring Richard Dix and Irene Dunn, not only is the only Western to ever have won the Best Picture Oscar, it won two additional Academy Awards out of its total of five nominations. So Cimarron really is regarded as the most famous and most successful Western epic of the early sound era. And it became the top money-making film in 1931 in both the United States and in Britain. So make no mistake about it, Cimarron is a big, red-blooded Western directed with the furious pace by Wesley Ruggles. And, of course, that's only half the story. It is really a tribute to the American family, the men and the women who built the American West. 
course, the most overwhelming scene in this uh, motion picture is without a doubt the Oklahoma land run sequence, which uh, with thousands of extras racing on horseback uh, in wagons and on foot to stake claims on the two million acre Cherokee Strip open to settlers on that famous day, April 22nd, 1889. In fact, footage from it has reappeared in almost every movie ever made thereafter about uh, had anything to do with Oklahoma. They used over a thousand vehicles, they had 3,500 horses, they had 5,000 extras, and they used 35 cameras uh, and trucks and airplanes all over the place. So now on this histo historic evening of the 1889 land run, the OETA Movie Club is very proud to present Irene Dunn, uh, Richard Dix, uh, Stell Taylor, all starring in the most famous Western epic of the early sound era. Let's enjoy Cimarron. Well, I bet you feel like you've just uh, taken part in the land run yourself, and uh, happy centennial weekend to you. I'm B.J. Wexler on a very special edition of our Friday Night Movie Club. Glad to have you by, and I hope things are going well for you this weekend. Hey, we're going to play trivia tonight on our centennial weekend. Why not do that? And we've got a nice prize for you from Valley, Oklahoma, a pair of tickets. Uh, they're doing a, a centennial uh, program coming up um, on the uh, 28th, next Friday night. And uh, you'll get a pair of tickets for that opening night performance from Valley, Oklahoma. And guess what? From the good folks at Edmund Coin and Jewelry, they've come out with a beautiful Oklahoma land well, they call it Land Rush, officially, of course, Land Run. Centennial coin, and it's, uh, of course, uh, in the shape of a, a keychain for you. You can't see the keychain part there, but that is a dandy. Uh, the other side says 100th anniversary, and there it is uh, on the screen for you, and that'll be your prize, a pair of tickets, plus, there it is, the keychain right there you'll get. We got a nice box for it, or actually, that comes in a sack, so we'll send it out to you. Here's our question for tonight. We'll put it on the screen with a brand new phone number tonight. So let's watch the phone number as you watch this question now. We'd like you to name the movie and the stars of the 1956 movie uh, based on Edna Ferber's Texas Oil novel. Of course, uh, tonight's Cimarron is another Edna Ferber uh, classic from a novel, but she wrote another one about uh, the Texas oil business. And uh, if you tell me the title of that film, released in 1956, You'll win all the stuff tonight. You'll win the uh, nice uh, gold chain here, little medallion, centennial issue, keychain, plus the pair of tickets for next week. And there's the brand new phone number tonight. It's toll free anywhere you're watching us tonight, in or out of the state of Oklahoma. 1 800 522 9051. We hope that you didn't miss the famous land run scene. Uh, who knows, you may have to wait another hundred years to see another like it. It was earlier on in the film. You know, believe it or not, all the wagons and all the horses used in that scene were supplied to the studio by just one guy. And he was a, he was a big guy. His name was Fat Jones. He weighed about 250 pounds. He had entered the movie business as a stuntman back in 1912, but later uh, bought his own stable, began renting horses to the movie studios. And now for Cimarron, Fat Jones had to hunt junkyards across the country and sometimes uh, board by board painstakingly, let me tell you, and very expensively, by the way, restore all those wagons. Now, remember, the used, we mentioned, over a 1,000 vehicles in that scene. They had 3,500 horses. They had 5,000 actors. They had 35 cameras. So for Jones, the equipment needed for such a very large uh, group of horses alone was just staggering. So by the time the Land Run film unit moved to uh, Delano, uh, Delano, California, to start shooting, Jones was almost broke. Now, he had figured that with all the expenses involved, he'd be bankrupt before the film was finished. Well, guess what happened? There was some good news for him, and fate intervened. To his delight, it began raining. Now, in fact, it poured for a week, and on each day of rain, Jones would collect a 50% standby fee as he had all the horses and all the wagons standing by. So when the sun came out, good old fat Jones was solvent again, and he went on to found Hollywood's most famous movie stable. And it started with this movie, Cimarron, which I hope you're watching tonight. You know, we do get a lot of mail in the movie club, and we really appreciate when you send us a letter. This letter goes back to July 5th of last year. It was from Sharon McGinty 
And at the time, she said, you know, I'd love to see the original Cimarron. She says, since everyone in Oklahoma at that time was gearing up for the 100th anniversary of the land run, it seems people were delving into Oklahoma history, and she's right. So she said, I'd love to see Cimarron, which, of course, we're playing tonight for her. And uh, she mentions Edna Ferber, of course, having wrote the novel, which we uh, know, of course. And uh, for Sharon, we thank you for that letter. And she mentions that the uh, female character is based on Saber Kravert, who uh, was based on the life of Mrs. T.B. Ferguson of Watonga, Oklahoma. We'll tell you another story about Edna Ferber a little bit later. But let's play movie club trivia as we go to the airline and say good evening. You're on the OETA. How you doing tonight? All right, how are you? Well, I'm doing great. You enjoying going back and watching the original film Cimarron with us tonight? I am, I sure am. Well, great. Have you been watching Oklahoma Passage, I'm sure? Uh, yeah. And enjoying that. And, of course, uh, big doings in Guthrie tomorrow, so lots going on this weekend. Well, I didn't get your name. I'm sorry. John Gordon. First name again, John. Uh-huh. Okay, John. And is Tulsa real nice tonight weather-wise? Yes, it is. Beautiful. Yeah, it's been a beautiful day around the state. Okay, John, let me show the folks at home the question one more time in case they're a munch in popcorn. All right. We said that uh, Edna Firmer's Texas novel, of course, uh, was based on a famous movie, uh, or was later made into a movie in 1956. And I bet you know the name of that uh, very famous movie, don't you? Yes, I do. And give me that name, won't you? It was Giant. Big Giant with The Rock Hudson, Liz Taylor, and James Dean. That's correct. Yeah. Well, John, we appreciate you being with us tonight. There's the correct answer on the screen. And uh, we've got this neat uh, um, honorary uh, medallion for the centennial there, Oklahoma Land Rush, 1889 to uh, 1989 centennial. We'll send this out to you. Plus, maybe you can come to Oklahoma City and see the ballet. Love to. John, thanks for watching tonight. Yeah, thank you. Have a good night to you now. Good night. Okay. Well, a tip of the cowboy hat tonight, and it feels kind of good to be in Western attire on the movie club tonight. Hope you're enjoying Cimarron, the original, back in 1931. Let's go back and watch more of this wonderful film. We'll take a short break. Hope you're enjoying this 1931 version of Cimarron, the granddaddy of the Westerns. It's uh, fun to see it, and uh, we have some news about uh, Cimarron tomorrow night we'll tell you about later. It's really hard to believe that Cimarron was the, uh, only the second film of Irene Dunn's career. Second film. Not only is the role very complex, but during the course of this picture, she has to age 40 years. You watch it now. She almost didn't get the part because of it. Director Wesley Ruggles thought she was too young and really inexperienced for the role. Now, if you've got a youngster in the family, they can learn really from Irene Dunn's determination. What she did, she persuaded a makeup artist and a cameraman to work with her over a weekend, making a series of photographs showing her how she would age, believably, from age 16 to 56. And for her effort, critics agreed that Irene Dunn was brilliant here in Cimarron. She also was awarded the first of five Academy Award nominations she'd receive in her long and very distinguished career. But a great film tonight. Glad to have it. Glad to have you on the movie club tonight. Don't forget we mentioned that tomorrow night we'll be presenting the 1961 color version of Cimarron. That'll be tomorrow night, and we'll start that at our regular time. Uh, let's see, tomorrow night will be 10 o'clock, I believe, the start time for Glenn Ford, Maria Schell, and Ann Baxter as well. And we'll be doing a trivia question in the next break. We've got a great prize for you. It's a, a silver centennial medal. We gave away the gold one in the last break. We have a silver centennial medal like this. There it is. And it's uh, given to us by the Edmund Coin and Jewelry Store. And it's a neat deal here. It uh, commemorates the Oklahoma land run, 1889-1989. And that'll be yours. Uh, we'll send it out to you for a correct answer in the next break. We mentioned uh, last week we have a special contest for you. It's called the OETA Tulsa Opera Weekend Getaway. We started it last weekend during La Traviata. If you'd like to win, you'll get two tickets to a Saturday, March 13th presentation of Susanna, plus uh, deluxe accommodations at the Weston Hotel at Williams Center the night of that performance. You'll also be invited to a very special Tulsa Opera brunch. If you'd like to enter, all you have to do is just send us a postcard, no questions to answer. Uh, question, uh, rather, a postcard or letter with your name, your address, and phone number. Just send it to us here, the Tulsa Opera Weekend Getaway, 
P.O. Box 14190 in Oklahoma City, and the zip code is 73113. Now, we'll take all the entries received. We'll put them in a hopper and draw the winner live on the show next week, Friday night, April 28th. Hope you'll send in your card uh, tonight or tomorrow and be on your way to a Tulsa Opera weekend getaway. We thank the Tulsa Opera for pulling that together for us and the Weston as well. Hope you're enjoying these last few minutes before we officially get to midnight when we can officially celebrate April 22nd Land Run Day in the state of Oklahoma. Great movie to watch tonight. You go back and watch the original version of Cimarron right now. We'll take a short break, but it sure is fun watching this uh, 1931 version of Cimarron as they talk about Oklahoma and uh, watch all that's going on. Hope you're enjoying it. Our movie club is on every Friday night. I'm B.J. Wexler, and of course, we enjoy your company as we get close to uh, the 12 o'clock hour when we can officially say it's April 22nd and officially a centennial day. We've got a few minutes to go before midnight. Let's play our final trivia game of the night, and we've got a great prize thanks to the folks at the Edmund Coin and Jewelry Store. They are going to present to you a silver centennial medal. Isn't that a dandy? You can see it there. It says Oklahoma Land Rush, 1889-1989, centennial, April 22nd, uh, 1989. And you'll get to keep that in its little box there. And we'll send it out to you for a correct answer. Now, before we uh, ask you the question, I'll tell you that tomorrow night we're doing Simmer on the Movie starring Glenn Ford. And that's why we're using Glenn Ford in our trivia question coming up now. So let me show it to you on the screen. Here's our trivia question this time with a, a brand new phone number tonight. Good in the state of Oklahoma. Glenn Ford portraying a high school teacher in what 1955 movie? Not a hard one at all. It'll bring back some great memories for you. Glenn Ford will be on the television here in the OETA tomorrow night in the uh, updated version of Cimarron uh, portraying a high school teacher in what 1955 movie we've got that uh, centennial medal for you toll free 1-800-522-9051 and we'll put the caller on the air and hope it's you hope you're doing okay tonight had a great parade in oklahoma city today and of course guthrie will have the big uh, doings tomorrow you know one of the nice things about the movie club is that we can look back in hollywood history and kind of correct any wrongs that may have occurred during the early years of filmmaking such is the case with a man by the name of B. Reeves Eason. They used to call him Breezy. Now, we've mentioned Breezy before here on the movie club for the very same reason that we mentioned him again tonight. Although Wesley Ruggles received an Oscar nomination for directing Cimarron, the one we're watching tonight, and well-deserved, of course, he wasn't the one responsible for the handling of the motion picture's most memorable scene. That's, of course, the land run sequence, which we saw early on in the film. That scene and others like it still stand today as some of the most exciting action scenes ever produced. Known for his genius at directing action, but not actors, Breezy Eason was responsible in his career for some of the most memorable mass movement sequences ever filmed, including the classic chariot race in the 1925 silent version of Ben-Hur, the climatic charge in the light brigade, which we've shown you, and the burning of Atlanta in Gone with the Wind. So long after you have watched tonight's scenes and the others that I've mentioned, if you enjoyed them and like to replay them back in your mind as we like to, we have B. Reeves Eason to thank for that pleasure. So uh, thank you, Breezy. I appreciate that. Let's go to the phone line now and play movie club trivia here on the OETA and talk with, let's see, good evening, you're on the OETA. Who am I talking to, please? This is Lloyd Barrett. Well, Lloyd, how are you tonight? I'm very fine. Well, happy Centennial Day celebration to you. Well, thank you very much. It's been a great one. Uh, they had a great parade in Oklahoma City, and, of course, Guthrie's going to have a big doings tomorrow. Yes, I wish I could be there. Yeah, a lot of folks are expecting between 50 and 100,000 people. It'll be a great day. Yeah, it really is. Great. Okay, got a nice prize, uh, this wonderful uh, a silver Centennial medal, which you'll be having. Uh, be something special that you can keep and remember. If you give me the correct answer, Glenn Ford portraying a high school teacher in what 1955 movie? Blackboard Jungle. You got it. And what a great film that was, wasn't it? It certainly was. It was one of his better ones. It sure was. Well, I'm going to send out this uh, Centennial Medal to you, and you'll be the envy of your neighborhood. Thank you so much. We All right. We'd like to have one. Well, thank you, Lloyd. Appreciate you watching.
Bye-bye. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay, there's our second player. And again, we thank the Edmund Coin and Jewelry Store, which provided that nice prize. Wanted to mention one other item tonight. We got a call this week and talked with a, a lady by the name of Ruby Lee Foster. And at the time, back in 1928, she was 17 years old, and she worked at the Aldridge Hotel in Wewoka. And guess who was staying there at the time? Uh, uh, Ruby Lee was 17, working in the cigar store. And Edna Ferber was staying at the Aldridge then, and she remembers very well Edna Ferber leaving every day, going out to view the countryside, get some good ideas for her book. And Ruby Lee uh, looks back in those times with fond memories. And we thank Ruby Lee for calling us and telling us that wonderful story. Hope you're enjoying Cimarron tonight. Let's go back and watch more of this classic film on the OETA Movie Club. <laughs>